Okay, so today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests from my students recently for um, some CAN bus videos. So today we're looking at a 2013 Ford Fiesta and we're going to be looking at some possible faults that you might run into on the CAN network. So what we have right here is a breakout box. So we're plugged into the data link connector down here and the breakout box just gives us better access to do testing on on all of our, our different pins. So you'll notice that pin number six and pin number 14 are for our CAN high communication lines. So pretty much every vehicle since 2008 has uh, CAN high and CAN low on six and 14. And you will run into some older vehicles that have that as well, but no guarantees until about 2008. So anyways, we have some uh, channels plugged into that for our PicoScope that we'll look at in a minute. The first test I wanna do right now is show you what the network looks like when it's not active as far as resistance goes. So we've got our multimeter set to ohms and I'm just gonna probe into the high and low right here. And what we get is 61 ohms, which is completely normal. Um, what the network has, there's two modules on the network somewhere that have two 120 ohm resistors on them. So they're wired in parallel. And when they're wired in parallel, we get this, this 60 ohm reading. If I were to see 120 ohms when I'm doing this test, that would mean I have an open between uh, my data link connector and one of those resistors. So you could use that to potentially um, kind of give you a direction on your testing. Okay, so now um, we're looking at pro demand and I wanted to show you what kind of communication we do have on this particular car. So on this uh, data communication line wiring diagram, you can see over here, this is our this is our data link connector. So there's our 16 pins and you can see 14 right there and six, The it's a white wire on pin 14 and six is a, a white blue wire. And notice when they come down, they kind of run into some splices and those splices then head out to all the individual modules. So we'll call that network the high speed CAN network. And that's what we're gonna kind of be focusing on in this video. But notice also there is this other network for some, some of the other modules. Also two wires, um, but this time it's called MS CAN, which is more of a medium speed uh, communication line uh, same sort of same sort of deal you diagnose it in the same way that we're going to be doing for this high speed the only difference is the communications are are being read at a different different speed so different kilobits per second okay so um, we're gonna go to one of these modules and what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate some problems that you might encounter while you're trying to diagnose uh, data communication codes um, so let's jump right to one of these modules and we'll, and, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we've got our Pico scope all set up and we're on plus or minus 10 volts on both channel A and B. And then for our time and our sampling rate, we wanna try to get as high a sampling rate as possible. So I've turned this all the way up to the highest it can be. And then for time, if we wanna watch this live, we're probably gonna be down here in the microseconds so we'll turn it to 100 microseconds for now and we'll adjust if we need to. Um, but notice when you change your time, obviously that messes with your sampling rate. So according to this, we're only getting 200 uh, mega samples per second, but that should be enough to get what we're looking for. Now on this Ford Fiesta, what I've done is I've uh, disconnected the passenger seat because there is two modules under this seat right here. And if you recall from the wiring diagram, white and white blue, are the wires for the data communication. So we're right here. This is very easy to get to. That's why we're doing it on this particular uh, location. But we're gonna cause specific faults to see how they affect our, our CAN signal, uh, just to give us a better idea of um, how to approach different communication problems when we're out in the field. So we're gonna simulate or actually cause some shorts on the network, opens on the network, and, uh, and kind of see what that does to our, our waveform. Okay, so before we go ahead and cause some faults, let's look at what our signal should look like when it's working properly. So uh, I turned the key on so communication can start. 
let's go live and there you can see that we are definitely getting communication I'm gonna pause that real quick okay so if everything is working the way it's supposed to be on the blue which is our can high signal we should be sitting at two and a half volts when there's no message being sent which we call the recessive bit and you can see that that's just about where we're at and then the can high gets pulled up to 3.5 when there's a dominant bit or an actual like message being sent. And so everything looks good right there. On the can low, same thing. It sits at two and a half at recessive, but then um, it gets pulled down to one and a half volts. So let's make sure that that looks about right. Okay. So everything looks good right here. Something I wanna make sure you know, if you see some like weird kind of waves happening on, on the waveform, that's actually quite normal on a lot of vehicles. So don't, uh, don't be alarmed by that. Uh, first time I saw that, I remember thinking, holy moly, I definitely found the problem here. But um, the thing you have to keep in mind is the computer is always looking at the differential between these two waves. So as long as it sees two volts when they're being pulled in their different directions and then zero volts when they're at the recessive then the message is getting received so if you're looking at a signal that you think man i think that's that's not right what you could do is you can add a math channel and subtract a channel a minus channel b and then you could see the voltage differential that the computer would be looking at so notice right there when I do that, I have this extra channel here and you can see that there's a nice clean um, wave happening from zero to two volts. Um, so that, that's kind of helpful when you're, when you're trying to figure out if there's something that's, that you think is a problem, but you want to make sure it actually is. Okay, so we're ready now to add our first fault. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to short out the can high on this particular section of the network over here. And then we're gonna see what it does to our signal from the data link connector. Or in other words, does shorting out over here affect the entire network? So I'm gonna short this to ground right now. And you can see that when you short out the can high, both high and low get pulled down to zero volts. Okay, and then notice that math channel for the differential is just flat lined. Okay, so that's our first first problem. When I take away that short, communication comes back. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to move my short from the high side over to the low side and see what that does to the signal here. Ah, very different. Okay, so when we shorted out the high side, they both drop to zero, but when I short out the low side, only the low side drops to zero, but the high side continues to send some sort of a message there. Let's stop that for a second. Okay, so instead of reading three and a half on the high side, it's more like 3.3. .3. And instead of going to recessive 2.5, it actually goes all the way to zero. So it still sends somewhat of a signal, but not a good signal. And then notice our math channel, we're still getting uh, something there but it should be zero to two volts and now instead it's like three volts so if you see something like that you'll know that you have a short on the low side now what we'll do is we'll actually short together the two wires and see how that affects the network and that's what we get right there so we're actually sitting somewhere around three-ish volts, but both sides are pretty much doing nothing. Notice the differential voltage is pretty much flat line too. Okay, so that's what will happen if you have a short together of the two communication lines. Let's fix that. And you can see communication resumes just like it should. Okay, so we've now shorted the high side, we've shorted the low side, we've shorted them together. For this one right here, what I did is I depinned the low side from this connector. So we'll see what an open causes when it's on the low side. And it looks like we're getting some sort of information still sent, but between 
between communication between these packets of information being sent we're getting these little uh, little sawtooth patterns so remember we cause an open on the low side and when we do that we're getting these little scallops that kind of get pulled up uh, voltage wise we're looking at around 4.3 and notice it's affecting both the high and low uh, wave okay let's now uh, cause an open on the high side and see if it does something similar all right so now you can see that I depinned the can high I put the can low back in let's see what that does to our wave let's go back live okay so similar but this time instead of having the sawtooth go up it actually goes down and our voltages now are dropping to 0.7 and again affecting both sides of the waveform all right so the only thing we haven't done yet is we haven't shorted to power yet for this i'm moving to a different module just so i'm a little closer to the battery to make this test a little easier this is our abs module we're looking at i've already teed into the two communication lines down there so we're gonna short those one at a time to power and then we'll see what that does to our waveform okay i shorted the can high to power and we're back here looking at the picoscope and notice we're not even on the screen let's turn up our voltages here and you can see that when we short to power we're pretty much getting battery voltage however it is interesting to note that the can high when it's shorted to power goes up to 13.26 but the can low still stays a little bit lower than that it actually stays around 12.35 so you can definitely see that it's not the low side that's shorted out it's the high side let's see if that holds true when I then short out the low side all right I shorted out the low side now short to power and just like we thought we're seeing that the low side has the higher voltage and the low side has the lower voltage so you can tell that it's the low side that is shorted to power but definitely affecting both both waveforms okay so you have now seen what happens when part of the network is shorted to power what happens when it's shorted to ground what happens when it's shorted together or when there's an open on the high or the low um, hopefully that helps you when you're out there trying to trying to diagnose these things now I've only done this on a Ford so far so I can't tell you that this is exactly what you'll see on every type of vehicle out there so I will make another video of uh, doing this on a different make but as for this Ford Fiesta this is this is what you will see